Welcome to Tales of Blue, where I'm delighted to be joined by a legendary championship man, Les Chapman. He spent 17 years at the club between 1997 and 2014 as kit man. Les, you originally arrived at City as part of the coaching staff under Peter Reid in 92, but left after a season with Alan Ball in 96. How did the return to kit man happen? How did you return to City? Uh, well, as I said, I, I got to Huddersfield and Brian Orton was manager, so he, when I got to... Uh, removed at City in 96. Um, Brian asked me to go to Huddersfield if I'd coach the youth team there, so obviously I didn't have a job, so I jumped at it. And uh, But unfortunately, again, after 10 months, Brian Horton got sacked at Huddersfield and all his staff, uh, so I was out of work again. And one of the physios at City at the time, a lad called Ronnie Evans, had been doing the kit along with uh, Tony Buck assisting and I've never really had a kit Man City and it was uh, Ronnie Hams, the, the physio, who was fed up of doing that because he wanted to do his own job sure. more, said, kept saying to Joe, get Chappie and get Chappie and he, he'll, he'll do the job and I had a mortgage, two kids, uh, no job so mm -hmm. I, jumped, I jumped at it, I needed a job so yeah of course. So, so Joe Royal was the manager then, so this, yeah. what, that would have been 97, 98? 97, yeah. So City, sponsored by Kappa that season. Yeah. Kappa. What are your memories of this shirt? Cam that season? Uh, Kappa were, I, I always liked Kappa, but Kappa UK was nothing like Kappa Worldwide. It was nowhere near as big as Kappa Worldwide. So we struggled to get um, not just match shirts, all, all shorts and training kit and stuff like that. Was mm. It was always hard work getting Kappa stuff, I always remember. But I did like the stuff. But as I say, it was... Uh, it was hard to come by. So that was the away kit for that season. Yeah. And then this third kit appeared. Yeah. Also, I don't know if you remember that. It was only worn five times that season. Yeah, not my favourite kit. Though. Yeah. And, uh, and allegedly only sort of one set was made. So they were quite, uh, it's quite sort of after kit now. For Absolutely. Protectors. I bet it is. But yeah, if you obviously. see that shirt, Chappers, what would you think of? Does it remind you of a game or just, it's quite a... I've actually no memories of that shirt <laughs> whatsoever. I'm sorry. sorry. I mean, I look around at this amazing collection and I've... I've I, a lot of them remind me of a particular player sure. or a particular game, but that particular shirt doesn't bring back any memories but at all. At the end of that season, obviously, ends in relegation and City dropped to the third tier of English football for yeah. the first time. Was that at Stoke? Uh, Stoke away last yeah. day of the season. What do you remember of that day? Um, I remember we battered them. I think it was 5-2. Five five two. Two. Yeah, 5-2. And uh, I think it was, um, I mean, Joe, it, it would have been an absolutely miraculous if we'd have stayed up that season. He did a brilliant job, but we were far away. But unfortunately, anyway, we went down and uh, it was a quiet dressing room. It was not one of the liveliest dressing yeah. rooms that I've experienced over the years, but obviously because of the relegation. But then um, we'd gone as low as we were going to go and, and we bounced back. That was the main thing. Yeah, so the third division... Ends with the Wembley playoff final. Wow. So uh, this is Sean Goat's shirt from that final. Wow, amazing. So what are your memories of that day, Les? I mean, a lot happened that day, didn't it, emotional-wise? But what kind of what well, jumps out at you when you see this shirt? They were all the same size, I think. Yeah, all XXL, yeah. even Paul Dickos. Even Paul Dickos, yeah. They didn't vary the sizes in those days. Um, it was just a... I mean... It, I, I know it's City, and City seem to get into some incredible scrapes and all that, but... You could never imagine that script being written. It was like, no. I mean, he brought, Tony Pulis brought the strikers off because he thought it was all over at 2-0 and, and then Kevin Horlock scores what would, would presume to be a consolation goal and then yeah. and then Dickie, of course. But there was plenty of characters in that dressing room. Amazing back, characters yeah. in that dressing room. Yeah, Tony Vaughan, Andy Morris and Kevin Horlock, who I mentioned, Paul Dickoff, Sean Gorter, Richard Edgell, Jeff Whitley, Michael Brown. Some great characters in there, and it was a great team spirit. And uh, I don't remember much after about an hour after the game because things started to go <laughs> yeah, a bit hazy, bit, bit uh, yeah, a bit wild after that. But it was yeah, a phenomenal day, nice weather. I can remember my mum was at the game with my daughters, and I think she was she'd be eighty odd at the time. And uh, I'm looking for her in the stand. Me and Ronnie Evans actually were wandering on the pitch looking for our families and that. And I spotted her in the stand. And she told me afterwards that at the final whistle when City had won, she had about four marriage proposals <laughs> yeah. from some City fans and that. Were there. But 
yeah, it was an incredible day. Great staff and great players at the time, a fantastic team spirit and it was a brilliant time to be at the club. Well that, that team and squad, there's a few new additions to it, but it goes on to have a second successive promotion for the kit changes to Leacock Sportif that season. That reminds me of Sean Gorton, not that sure. Shirt, yeah. no, it's Crooksy Lee Crook, yeah. Great lad. Yeah. But uh, Blackburn wasn't so it? You think the last game I yeah last year. Well, I think we were in the red and black, weren't we? Yeah. That's it. Blackburn. What about this fella? Danny Teato. Crackers. <laughs> We've got a story about Danny. Uh, not that I can tell. <laughs> um, actually, yeah, the, we a good uh, lad, brilliant lad. We we did um, at the end of that season. We about seven or eight of us, me, uh, Gerard Vikings, Sean Gorter, Danny Teato, Paul Ritchie, about seven or eight of us. Um, we went to we rented a, a villa outside. Marbella for a week just for celebrating yeah. everything just and uh, in this villa that we hired there was a swim pool and a jacuzzi at the back and I can remember Danny Teato come out of the kitchen and I think we would all had a few drinks and <laughs> he said watch this and he's, he sprinted by the side of the pool and did a double somersault in, and landed feet first into the jacuzzi but unfortunately, his momentum carried him on and he knocked himself out <laughs> on the side of the jacuzzi, which was full of blood in about 12 seconds. You know. But it, it was all right after about a couple of minutes. But that was <laughs> typical of Danny Teato. Yeah. I, I think he was famous for kicking a bucket over uh, a manager, I think. And all. Yeah, but I think when he got sent off against Norwich at home, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, he was a real be. character. But thanks. So, Good promotion back to the Premier League <laughs> after four seasons away. I this guess. kit comes and the, the sizes were just, you know, fit, fit, fit for all. This is the, still in the age of the long sleeve. Yeah, sure. But what do you remember about this guy coming in was a big marquee signing. I took George Weir to a tattooist in Middleton where Beckham used to get his tattoos done. <laughs> and he came out after he'd had his tattoo done. I said, George, like, he's got a t-shirt on and he's had a tattoo. It wasn't a Man City tattoo. <laughs> no, I can't remember what it was, a tattoo, but I said, why, why, you, it, it, he had it done in black. I said, why have you, I, it, you couldn't see it, you know. Said, but yeah, he was a lovely fella, great character. Um, was he could, good around, I know he wasn't there that long, but was he good around the club? Because he's a yeah. world, world name in football, Absolutely, he, he had yeah. great respect from the rest of the players because they'd known what he'd done mm -hmm. and what player he'd been. And there were flashes in games and in definitely in training where you could see what an exceptional player he'd been. You know, yeah. I mean, his, his fitness obviously was lacking at the time he came to City. He wasn't as fit as he was, but you could see the genuine ability that he had. Yeah. Absolutely. Great character. The so same season. This shirt was actually used over three seasons. This is the second of the three yeah, in the Premier that's League. That's the famous. Oof. So now this is a name now. Those, that, that, that's a head turner yeah. now. Yeah. All these years later. Yeah, that's an uh, iconic city shirt. That is. That, that was was the one like that in the seventies. But this goes like? right the way back to the sixty eight, sixty nine season. Yeah. It was Malcolm Allison who of recently course. said like. We should AC Milan the final, were, wasn't it? In the yeah, more than sixty nine. AC Milan, yeah, of course. He said we should be more attractive, yeah. like the yeah. AC Milan side, and we actually won what the sixty nine final, seventy League Cup, Cup Winners Cup. So we won a few, yeah, few trophies in it. Nice, I like that shirt. So we drop out of the Premier League that season. Joe Rule moves on. Kevin Keegan comes in, and we start with a sort of darker laser blue. Gerald mm -hmm. Weekins, great lad, another lad who's played in three tiers of football for us. Very but, underrated was highly respected by the rest of the players on the team and every manager who came in he was like sex always had a good player. game always seven six seven eight play seven, anywhere eight. play anywhere he was like the steadiest player you could ever imagine great professional terrific lad genuine down-to-earth lad nothing flash about him but yeah yeah he's, he's so great. a retail great season under keegan 0102 yeah. scoring goals for fun yeah Oh, Berkovic, Ali Bernabia. Oh, they said they could never play together, them two, and they yeah. played together like the first time, and they, they were like incredible. I think we won like five or six, yeah. something. But yeah, Berkovic for me was, uh, in fact, I spoke to him last week. He sent me a voice message from Israel where he okay. lives now, and uh, he's completely bald. <laughs> I can't, have to catch he had a bushy head of her and, yeah. and everything, yeah. but he's bald now. But yeah, fantastic player. And Bernabia, of course, you could see 
I'd, I'd love to see him in his prime as well. He, yeah, he yeah. was phenomenal talent. But there, there was, was talk of when he signed Les, he virtually got straight off the plane from Paris. And, yeah. and it was Birmingham home, his debut right. under Keegan. You could see then, wow. Yeah. He's, he's some player because yeah. he wasn't that well known worldwide. No, I, you know, well, I I've never heard of him either uh, before he came. But he was certainly a good player. He certainly was well known after a few months at City. So back in the Premier League, and some big names come in. I remember this fella. I think uh, <laughs> this fella this shirt made to fit, or <laughs> this, no? Well, it, it would probably just fit him. He, he used to have. He was the first player. Really, who, who took his shirts after games or swapped them? I okay. took them or swapped them. This is 02, 03, isn't Yeah, it? he had like 92 in the season, and it, it, I'd never known that from players before. I mean, up to 93, there were no names on shirts, so people yeah. didn't swap, but then he was the first that in mass started swapping or taking his shirts, and he'd have, he'd have a new kit for the warm up. Right for a game and a new kit for the first half and a new kit for the second half so he kept you busy then yeah so he'd always have both shirts every game and he'd arrive in the dress it was brilliant lad during the week and he, he uh, like match days he turned into some kind of freak like he would <laughs> arrive in the dressing room and he would give me his match gloves and he would say right look chappy hide these where nobody else can see them or touch them and i, I produced them at what, the right time which was about 40 seconds before he went out so I'd have to hide them in different places each time so nobody could see them or find them. So and then I'd give him his gloves just before I went out. Then he would shake hands in a certain order with certain people, the same every week. And he used to wear a nine and a half boot on one foot and a ten and a half on the other. <laughs> As I say, he was like this weirdo on a match day, but brilliant lad during the week. And obviously been a phenomenal keeper who had yeah. an incredible career. And I'm so glad he's... His son, who is a brilliant lad, Casper Schmeichel, yeah, has, has done so City. well. Yeah. Came through City, but has had an absolutely incredible career. For a Premier League winner, FA Cup winner yeah. as well. Fantastic. Great lad. So staying with that season. Kevin it? Orlock. Well, do you remember the big fella? Well, I'll give you a full year. We all know the tragic circumstances. I had a pair of his boots, actually, for months and months after, and then somebody must have nicked him out of the kit room. But I remember keeping a pair of his boots. He was a pretty sad occasion i think we had some kind of tribute at manchester yeah. cathedral and everything but it was a cracking lad mark wasn't he Lock, Lock lovely, lovely lad. Just, just a nice lovely happy lad. he would be he'd chuckle and laugh at the smallest things and he was so down to earth and nothing flashy about him at all he was just genuine genuinely gentleman it was yeah, absolutely lad. tragic it was tragic yeah so this is a guy whose name always brings a smile to city fans faces and yours as well because you've mentioned him a few times already I mean, you could probably write a book alone on, on him. this fella, could what you? What a character. But gave it all 